Hey guys, this video is specifically targeted for you, those guys out there looking to start a construction company, specifically in the remodeling world, which is my expertise. But those guys who are project managers, lead carpenters, people who have the skill set and are thinking about doing it on their own to go out and chase your dream of being a business owner. I'm Mike Claudio with Winray Consulting. Uh, I do sales, coaching, and consulting for contractors, specifically in the B2C world, uh, people dealing with homeowners. And today I want to go over some of the key things I see that most people just miss or don't know or don't really prepare for when going from employee to business owner. You know, the first thing I want to talk about is you got to find a name. Finding a name is super important for your long-term vision. You want people to be able to see it, recognize, and understand what it is that you do pretty easily through your marketing and messaging. So just having Joe Construction may not be as specific as you might want to be. So something to think about when you're going from employee to business owner, what you think you want that name to be. You'll need to create an LLC, which is a limited liability company. It helps protect you and your personal assets around any type of thing that might go wrong with the business. Not saying that it will, but there's always a chance that it might. And you want to be able to protect your personal belongings and your family from any type of lawsuits, thing like that. So the LLC is really important to create early on. You're also going to want to get insurance. So I would completely suggest touching on or reaching out to one of your local business insurance brokers. They'll have the idea of what you'll need in your area, your region, your market um, that'll protect you the most specifically for uh, what you're trying to do in the size projects you want, which leads me to your license. So you can do construction projects without a license, but you can't pull permits. You can't have the proper coverage from the state. And you can also only do projects to a certain size. So without a license, you can do up to a $35,000 construction cost project. So what construction cost means is not what the retail value of that project is, it's what the, the actual project costs to complete to you. So let's just say for instance, you're charging $60,000 for a kitchen remodel, but the cost to you for labor materials and those sort of things is 32,000. So your profit is the, the 32 to, to 60, which is 28,000. The 32 is the cost. That's under the limit if you don't have a license. It's really hard to do a kitchen remodel for that amount. But if you're just looking to do repair work or be more of a handyman or a punch list guy, you can do that without a license. But if you're looking to get into more of the remodel world, you gotta go out and you gotta get your GC license. There are several levels of it depending on the size projects you wanna do or what you're focusing on. If you're looking at mid-size remodels, the basic level is pretty okay. If you're looking to do more new home construction or spec building or things of that nature, you may need to get a more a higher level, even unlimited license. Because if you wanna look into doing any type of commercial work, you'll need the unlimited license level. So. You gotta go out and then decide if you wanna be specialty or just an overall GC. Like if you just wanna do roofing or you just wanna do siding or you just wanna do plumbing or electrical, you can get a specialty license that only licenses you for that specific trade. But if you're gonna be more of a GC where you wanna be a larger scale business and you wanna go out and help more people, you wanna look at getting the full GC license, which is a little bit of a more in-depth process. Um, and there are definitely some specification around that around what your current uh, you know, cash value is, person, how much money do you have, because that's important. They're gonna look at that. You're gonna need some references, you're gonna need to pass a test. Don't worry about the test. There's courses out there you can take um, to help teach you how to do that and how to prepare for that. I know several people personally who have were a project manager, a lead carpenter, went and took the course, learned what they need to do, got the book, studied, and passed the test pretty easily. So it's not as intimidating as you might think it is, you just gotta put in a little bit of effort to pull it off. You wanna look at outsourcing. Once you have the LLC, you have the insurance, you have uh, the name picked out, you kinda go through all that process. You're a one-man show, right? You're gonna be wearing a tool belt, you're gonna be answering the phone, you're gonna be doing all kinds of things. On the bookkeeping side is one of the really easy ways to outsource something that you just don't need to spend your time doing. So finding a bookkeeper and account pretty inexpensively at first because you're not gonna have that many transactions is a great way to take something off your plate. Not only does it give you time back, but you've likely never kept a book in your life or kept track of finances. So it's in your interest to find somebody who has experience doing that because when it comes down to tax time, you don't want to get that wrong. And it's pretty inexpensive to hire somebody to do that for you. Um, Part-time, you know, most accountants have bookkeepers. There are specific bookkeepers out there. There are bookkeepers out there that are specifically focused on the construction industry. So ask around, find out what some of your peers are doing, but just find somebody. So that leads me to your peer network. This is a phenomenal 
phenomenal opportunity for you to join an association, a group, a networking group, something along those lines that are specifically contractors because you can learn a lot from those people. You can shorten the failure gap. And if you don't know this, 80% of new businesses fail within the first year, 80%. And of those 20% that survive, 80% of those people fail in the first five. That is a phenomenal failure rate. You wanna shorten that gap. You wanna be successful. I assume you have goals, you have dreams of how much money you wanna make. You know what you wanna do with that money when you get it. You might wanna buy a house, a boat, a hunting lodge, a new gun, I don't know, but there's something you wanna do with that money, so you don't wanna fail. So find an association that you can get with that are, have people within it that have been around the block for a while. So I'm a part of NARI, the National Association of Remodeling Industry. If there's not one of those chapters in your area, find something of similar value that you can go in and talk to people who have done it. You can bring your problems to them and ideally find some people who can mentor you. Can't find a mentor? Can't find an association? Hire a coach. It's what I do for a living. So Winray Consulting is a coaching. I go in and help business owners in the construction industry, specifically with sales and business development practices, but I help them in all aspects of their business because I've been around this industry for a while. I've helped businesses grow for a long time. I know things to look at and what to do and what not to in a lot of scenarios. I don't know everything and no one does. I'm constantly learning too, but with each client I work with, I learn a little bit more. So there are people out there just like me or me, feel free to call me, um, but I can help these guys shorten the failure gap around going out and developing business, which is your biggest step. This is the part that I think most people who are employees and are transitioning to business owner, they miss on drastically. They do not understand the value or the need for a sales process. Let me give you an example. Right now, you wake up every day, you go to work to a job someone tells you to go to, to do a task that somebody tells you to do with a group of people that they provide for you. None of those things are going to be there when you're your own business owner. You gotta feed yourself. So going out and learning how to develop business starts with developing a niche. What a niche is, is de deciding what types of projects you wanna do. Once you identify that type of project, you can target them and figure out how to go out and win them. That requires a consistent process. You are gonna be busy, you're gonna be wearing a lot of hats, you're gonna be all over the place, you're gonna be a little confused, you're gonna be a little scared sometimes, you're gonna get pissed off because you're a new business owner. Everybody goes through that. But developing a sales process is the difference between businesses that make it and businesses that don't. In case you don't realize, the only way you make money as a business owner is when clients pay you. The only way to get that to happen is to sell them a project. So you have to be good at this if you think you're gonna be successful in this industry. If you don't think you can sell, or if you don't wanna sell, you either gotta figure out how to hire somebody to do that, or maybe it's just not the right time for you to go out on your own. And I deal with a lot of those guys. I've talked to dozens of them, and they realize that they're just not ready, and that's okay. But then go figure out how to learn how to do it. Go do things in your job right now that are client-focused or client-facing, so you can get more comfortable with that. That's a great, step in the process of your skill development outside the trade side, outside the actual physical side. Because once you're a business owner, you're not just doing the physical side anymore. You gotta sell, you gotta network, you gotta submit proposals, you gotta create proposals. You have to do all these things. You have to market, you gotta do social media, you gotta do video production. These are a thousand different things that are out there, but unless you develop a consistent process that you hold yourself accountable to following, you're just not gonna be as successful as you wanna be, if successful at all. You have all that. You got the LLC, you got the insurance, you got the mentor, you got the coach, you got the sales process. Now it's time to go out and start doing it. This is where you'll really start to learn what you don't know, and that's okay. Lean on those people that you've just invested time and energy into, i.e. your mentor, your coach, your accountant. These people have been around it. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's the last thing I wanna leave you with. Do not be afraid to ask questions because that is the single thing. Understanding what you don't know is a huge tool that a lot of people are afraid to be vulnerable about. Don't let that be you. So get out there, develop a sales process, develop the business, find the right niche for you, and then win fast and win often.